Hi. How are you? I'm fine. Probably not. Like, yeah. It's like, yeah. It's a hair top. I can't. Good. Where does he play? Oh, yeah, yeah. Hi, I'm here today with uh, iconic filmmaker Ryan and author John Watson. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. 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 Um, thanks for joining us today, John. Thanks for having me. John joined us last night at the opening of the Americans for the Arts Half Century Summit uh, in Baltimore at Center Stage, and 600 people were very excited to meet with yeah, you. Yeah, it was a great audience. Oh, it was great. People yeah. were really energetic. Um, but I wondered if we could just start a little bit, since we're here at an arts conference, can you tell us, uh, growing up, maybe one of your most memorable arts experiences was? Well, you know, the arts experiences I went to were always ones that caused trouble. You know, underground movies that broke censorship laws, or, or I would always go see films, art films like Bergman, when it first played in Baltimore, was shown as a sex film oh, wow. because they had nudity in it. And it was shown in the skin flick place, which is so ludicrous. And the movie was called Monica, and they renamed it Monica's Hot Summer, <laughs> which was so amazing. But uh, So certainly the art experiences, I guess the very first one was when I went as a kid to the Baltimore Museum gift shop and I bought a little Moreau print and I hung it in my bedroom when I was eight years old and all the other kids went, oh, that's awful, why would you buy that? And I realized the power of art, uh, that it could infuriate people. And so yeah. I in immediately became uh, an art collector. <laughs> what, growing up, were there things specifically about the Baltimore art scene, uh, you talked a little bit, but that inspired you, things that really um, set you off? I think that Baltimore inspired me. I don't know about the art scene in Baltimore because they weren't, there wasn't one almost when I was growing up, except for the Baltimore Museum. Um, and that was very good when Brenda Richardson came there and, and got a lot of late Warhol and stuff. And she, I think the Baltimore Museum was the first person that ever gave me some legitimacy, you know, and they got some trouble about it. You know, taxpayers that were outraged, they gave, this was before Hairspray. Okay. So, um, but they were very supportive. Um, there were, the audiences here were always supportive, but um, there was no film commissioner then. There was no um, film festival here. There, were, there was very little things to be supportive in any way. And I got arrested for making the movie. So um, I guess that inspired <laughs> me. Being in prison is sort of a, an extreme <laughs> review. Not many of us can relate to that. No, but um, so uh, people were supportive of me, but there was no art organization to go to, certainly, at that time. Today yeah. there would be. Today there's art schools a kid can go to in junior high. Uh, when I went there, if I had ever made those movies, I would have been expelled, basically. Mm. I was expelled. <laughs> that was later. <laughs> You also mentioned last night that access to new technology has really made a lot a surge in filmmakers and young filmmakers. Yep. Do you have any advice for young filmmakers? Advice to young filmmakers is learn to get along with rich people because they're going to back your movie. If you have a rich relative, be nice to them. Um, don't say, I don't care if anybody sees my movies because no one will, I promise you. And read the trade papers. Learn how the business works. You've got to know something about it. Find an arts organization, but arts organizations have to be just as obsessed about finding the right one mm -hmm. because because um, nobody's going to knock on your door. They, people think an art organization is going to go ha door to door and say, excuse me, would you like to make a movie? Here's the money. It, that doesn't happen. Yeah. And, and so our art organizations have to encourage the kids that has the obsession and the drive to somehow make it happen. Because there's no, everybody says to me, how do you get your first movie made? I don't know. I can't get a movie made right now. The business goes up and down yeah. all the time. So you have to figure a way. That's the whole point. I also wondered if you could talk a little bit about the arts and cultural um, lines in, in this country. Do you think art crosses political lines in this country? I think all art is political in a way, and, um, but the ones that are overtly political are not so effective to me always. Um, I think you have to do a sneak attack. Mm -hmm. I think it has to be more subtle. I think all humor is political. I think any action that anybody takes in public is, is in the long run um, political. But if you want to change somebody's mind, you, um, you have to make them laugh first. And I'm a liberal, God knows. Uh, but however, I get liberals get on my nerves that assume everyone agrees with them at all times and never imagine somebody might be in the room that doesn't agree with them. Um, so I think that um, I'm friends with some Republicans. I think it's important. I read the Wall Street Journal because I want to read how really smart people that don't agree with me think mm -hmm. so I can argue better. A real discourse. Yeah. So I don't want to just watch a TV station that I agree with every, every person that says it on there. I don't understand that. I'd rather watch the ones I don't agree with. Um, and I never listen to like talk radio when they're fighting. I, don't, I have faith in my own opinions. I, I don't need somebody to tell me I'm right or wrong. Well, I want to thank you for being here with us. Um, sure, it looks like a good convention. Oh, it's going to be great. Yeah. I think it's, you got us off to a great start last night. Thank you very so much. Thank you so much.